11th of September 2023, we are in the military media center of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. The Russian Federation continues its conquest warfare against Ukraine and, despite losses, it doesn't refuse its plans concerning full occupation of the territory of Ukraine. The Russians consequently ignore laws and customs of the war, they use terror tactics, they inflict attacks against Ukraine and shelling against military and civilian objects. Unfortunately, during the previous week we have uh, wounded and killed among civilians, including children and women. There are also a lot of destructions and damages of civilian infrastructure destroyed buildings, kindergartens, schools, hospitals. During the previous week, the Russians has inflicted 43 missile attacks against Ukraine and 441 air attacks. Possibility of inflicting missile and air attacks against the whole territory of Ukraine remains high. On the northern borders of Ukraine and Russia, the Russian Federation maintains presence of its troops. It keeps in bordering areas of Bransk, Kursk and Belgorod regions three troops formation with purpose to distract our troops from main access of hostilities and prevent us from redeploying our troops there. In the same way, alongside the northern border, the Russian Federation inflicts shellings of our localities and uses sabotage and reconnaissance groups violating the state border of Ukraine. The main hostilities are taking place on southern and eastern axis. On eastern axis, which means on the eastern front, the Russian Federation offends on four axes, Kupiansk, Klemansk, Avdiivka and Marinka. There they use all possible forces to advance to the borders of Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Nonetheless, the armed forces of Ukraine are stopping them powerfully there. Therefore, Russians are not able to advance on the east. In particular, during the previous week, the Russians had attacked in the vicinity of Sankivka, Kharkiv region, Kupiansk axis. Nonetheless, it was unsuccessful. On Liman axis, the Russians have been offending in the vicinity of Berestova, Kharkiv, Kharkiv region, as well Novoselivsk and Novoyehorivka Luhansk region. Nonetheless, they were not able to advance there. However, during the whole previous week, extremely fierce fighting took place there. On Bakhmut axis, our armed forces have been advancing, and we have some success in the vicinity of Klishivka and Andreevka. There, Ukrainian armed forces are oozing the enemy, and on those territories which are already liberated, uh, they are being fixed on the lines. The total amount of liberated territory in the vicinity of Bakhmut and on Bakhmut axis two square kilometers and the total number of liberated territory in the vicinity of Bakhmut is 49 square kilometers. On Marinka and Avdiivka axis on the east, the fierce fighting took place where the Russians were trying to seize Marinka to encircle Avdiivka. Nonetheless, they were not able to do this because of the armed forces of Ukraine powerfully stopping them there. The Russians were trying to offend in the vicinity of Keramik, Avdiivka, Marinka, Novomikhailivka, Prochestivka, Donetsk region. In these areas, during the whole previous week, there were enemies assaults, shelling. Nonetheless, Russians were not able to advance. Moreover, our armed forces have success in the vicinity of Opetne. The armed forces of Ukraine, 
took part of this locality and they have partial success in the vicinity of Novomayorivsky. There, the armed forces of Ukraine are being fixed on the taken positions. On the south, on Melitopol axis, offensive continues. During the previous week, there were success in the vicinity southern from Robotano and western from the village Verbova and on the south on Tauria exit the armed forces of Ukraine during the previous week has liberated 1.5 square kilometers. Moreover, the armed forces of Ukraine powerfully destroy offensive and defensive potential of the Russian army, which means that uh, alongside with advancing if we are talking about South, for example, they were destroyed up to 30 ammunition stockpiles of the Russians, six command and control posts of the Russian army, and more than 200 units of the enemy's uh, equipment, Russian equipment and ammunition. Moreover, if we are talking both about Eastern and Southern axis, I should say that more than 500 Russians' equipment and armament were destroyed, which reasonably weakened potential of the Russian troops which have been attacking on the east and defending on the south. We continue to defend our land, we continue to liberate our territories from the Russian invaders, and we will win.